Hello everyone! In this video, we will discuss the early embryogenesis and maternal recognition of pregnancy. Before describing the significant events that take place during the early stages, let us first describe some of its terminologies. The meaning of these expressions varies somewhat based on the animal being referred to as well as the circumstance in which it is used. First off, let's describe what is syngamy. Syngamy is the most typical method of sexual reproduction. It is also known as fertilization. It involves the complete and irreversible joining of two haploid gametes to create a diploid zygote. After syngamy, the zygote becomes an embryo. Embryo, on the other hand, is an early stage of development of a multicellular diploid eukaryotic organism. In general, it is the organisms that reproduce sexually and develops from a zygote, which is a single cell resulting from the fertilization of the female egg cell by the male sperm cell. The zygote possesses half the DNA from each of its two parents. We also have the term conceptus. Conceptus refers to the whole set of byproducts of conception or fertilization which includes the embryo or fetus in the early stages, the embryo and extra embryonic membranes in the pre-implantation stage, and the placenta in the post-attachment stage. Lastly, we have the term fetus. It is the unborn offspring that develops from an animal embryo. The term embryo, conceptus, and fetus are often used interchangeably to describe the developing organism. After fertilization, four important development events occur before the embryo attaches to the uterus. First is the development within the confines of the zona pellucida. Second, hatching of the blastocysts from the zona pellucida. Third, maternal recognition of pregnancy. And fourth, formation of the extra embryonic membranes. Now let's proceed to the pre-attachment development of the embryo. Presence of male and female proniculi within the cytoplasm of the oocyte characterizes a developmental stage of a newly fertilized oocyte. This cell is called the ootid. Ootid is an egg that results from the second meiotic division of an oocyte and that develops into a mature egg. Ootids are among the biggest cells in the body and they stand out for possessing a huge amount of cytoplasm compared to their nuclear volume. As you can see, the first and second polar bodies, as well as the male and female proniculi, are all present. Syngamy occurs when a single diploid nucleus is formed by union of male and female proniculi. Following the fusion of male and female proniculi, the single-celled embryo, or the zygote, undergo a rapid cell cycles with no significant overall growth, producing of cells the same size as the original zygote. Shortly thereafter, the zygote undergoes cleavage and gives rise to daughter cells called the blastomeres. In this picture, the first cleavage division generates a two-celled embryo, also known as the blastomeres. Each blastomere in the two-celled embryo is about the same size and represents almost exactly one half of the single-celled zygote. Each blastomere undergoes subsequent divisions, yielding four-celled embryo that develops into an eight-celled embryo and then give rise to 16 daughter cells. Blastomeres from two, four, and eight-celled embryos are totipotent. Totipotency is a term used to describe the ability of a single cell to give rise to a complete, fully formed individual. The mitotic division of each blastomere generally occurs simultaneously, but are unique in that with each division. Two cells are produced from each blastomere. The cleavage division or mitotic division that occur between the one cell and the blastocyst stages. As a result, an embryo gains cell number but still contains the same total mass of the cytoplasm it had when it was one cell zygote, all of which take place 
inside the zona pellucida that maintains a fixed volume throughout the process. After the 8 cell stage, a ball of cells is formed and this embryonic stage is referred to as the marula. This is when a solid ball of cells is formed and individual blastomeres can no longer be counted accurately. The stage of marula is achieved by the series of divisions because of the cleavage of the early embryo, beginning from the single cell stage of zygote. Cells of marula continue to divide and blastocyst develops. As you can see, it consists of an inner cell mass and a cavity called the blastocyl and a single layer of cells called the tropoblast. So this picture shows the formation of the marula, beginning from the two-celled embryo up to the formation of the blastocyst. To further understand the process, let's discuss transition of a marula into an early blastocyst. A few days after fertilization, the cells on the outer part of the marula become bound together in a tight formation a formation of desmosomes and a gap junctions. As they get in the tight formation of desmosomes and gap junctions, they become nearly indistinguishable in a process known as compaction. Gap junctions form between the inner cells, thus creating two groups of cells, and tight junctions form between the outer cells of the marula. Sodium, in the other hand, is pumped into the intercellular spaces by the outer cells and water follows osmotically. Therefore, fluid begins to accumulate within the marula. As fluid accumulates, the outer cells become flattened and a cavity known as the blastocyst is formed. The gap junctions connecting the inner cells of the marula allow these cells to polarize as a group and as a result, two separate cellular components emerge. These are the inner cell mass and the tropoblast. The cells that are present on the outside and inside undergo differentiation. The outer cells become tropoblast and the inner cells lead and become inner cell mass progenitors. The formation of a cavity inside the marula is through the active transport of sodium ions from tropoblast cells and the osmosis of water. So this leads to the formation of a hollow ball of cells that are known as the blastocyst. Hatching of blastocyst is governed by three forces. First, growth and fluid accumulation within the blastocyst. Second, production of enzymes by the tropoblastic cells. And third, contraction of the blastocyst. The outer cells of the blastocyst become the first embryonic epithelium. This is also known as the trapectoderm. Some of the cells, however, will always be there in the interior and will lead to becoming the inner cell mass and are pluripotent. When we say pluripotent, it can differentiate into different types of cells. So in mammals, the inner cell mass will finally form the embryo proper, during which time the trapectoderm forms the placenta and the extra embryonic tissues. Lastly, because of the nature of tight junctions or the outer cells and the gap junctions which is the inner cells, the embryo becomes partitioned into two distinct cellular populations. Inner cell mass will give rise to the body of the embryo and the tropoblastic cells will eventually give rise to the chorion and finally, the chorion will become the fetal component of the placenta. As the blastocyst continues to undergo mitosis, fluid continues to fill the blastocyl and the pressure within the embryo also increase. The tropoblastic cells will produce enzymes in which it weakens the zona pellucida so that it ruptures easily as growth of the blastocyst continues. Finally, the blastocyst itself begins to contract and relax.